Hey, what's going on, you Starverse fanatics? And in today's video, we're going to be talking about Britta's Tacos and, of course, something else. I really forgot the title of it. All right, so the title that I completely forgot about was called Doop Doop. Yeah, no wonder why I forgot about the title. Let's just, let's just get started with the announced video. All right, so from the beginning, we have Star who looks through a book that is a map of Muni in order to find a trip to go with Tom. And by the way, this is of course indeed the same guy that I really felt as if was in blood relation with Marco himself. The title of the book itself is called Alphonse the Worthy's Map which is a book from Tom Lucitor himself. And if you were to go through the Book of Spells in Solaria the Monster Carver's chapter, you can see that Alphonse was one of her most trusted councilmen. And seriously, if he was revealed to be the true husband of Solaria the Monster Carver, that would be an awesome reveal. But even if he wasn't, he's still definitely a Mewman, and um, just him being related to Marco Diaz alone would be it would be awesome. So Star and Marco eventually start teasing with each other about where Star should go next and um, eventually she begins biting on Marco's arm. Now can someone please convey to me when they've ever had the experience of a girl biting on their arm in a playful manner and not be their girlfriend. So after some time passes Tom eventually brings himself in in order to pick up Star for their vacation and I just love how when both Marco and Janna are seen going through the portal to go back to Earth Star is the one who still has possession of Marco's dimensional scissors. But I guess this was Marco's way of cutting ties with Muni from Earth in order for him to make sure that he never has temptations to go back. So once Star finally made her way to say goodbye to Janna and Marco, she then goes on to the Monster Temple in order to say goodbye to Globgor and Eclipsa. And quite honestly, from what it seems, it looks as if Eclipsa and Globgor are doing a great job reigning over Muni so far. Even Gloucester seems to be approving of it. Despite the vegan Muni cake that Globgor tries to present to Star, <laughs> It's kind of funny how Star just gobbles it up and after realizing the fact, oh yeah, it's not a real human, but let me just eat this anyways. I love you so much. So then the episode continues on with Star saying goodbye to both Ponyhead and Seahorse, who is now on parole until further notice after spending his time in jail. If I go outside, I'll explode. Like guys, come on, what? <laughs> The guy obviously was faking the queen napping. Well, I guess they can't admit it to the public, so they have to go with it, but still, come, poor seahorse, poor guy really. Proceeding on with the episode, we're then moved on to Buffrog and his children, and one of his children named Katrina, one of the main children of them all, is really great at cornball, and Star says herself that she could be a potential really great one in the future. Which is really great when you think about it, because honestly, Katrina could have just completely stopped playing cornball after losing that first game, but she kept on going. And so Star once again says goodbye to Katrina and the rest of the children, alongside with Buffrog, who <laughs> warns Tom to protect Star at all costs, or else or you will answer to me. Oh, I, I will, sir. Great, go and have a good time. And then finally, Star makes it up to her parents and visits them before saying goodbye. Who apparently, by the way, is having a great life with a Yuridan, having a simple life and not being queen for once, even though she technically is queen of that entire Muman campsite, because honestly, those people cannot do anything alone. So after visiting everybody throughout the kingdom, Star eventually decides to visit her very first magical spell named Doop Doop the Broom. And uh, yeah, if you haven't figured it out by now, this is literally literally the reason why they titled it the episode Doop Doop. It was just to confuse others, to never guess what the heck the episode was talking about, and uh, yep, they just, that's why. They, Disney keeps tricking us, man. And of course, if you find his voice very familiar, he is the one and only Justin Roiland, also known as the voice actor for Rick and Morty themselves, and a few others, I believe. Ah, Doop Doop, what's new? <laughs> Oh, Star! Oh, well, 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 nothing's new since you abandoned me in here. And Star does all of this in order to procrastinate telling Tom that she doesn't know exactly where to go and that she didn't circle a single place on the map. I guess after going through all those traumatic experiences as a teenager, she must be like, wow, um, I'm free? Oh my gosh. It's kind of like being out of school and you're like, well, now what? Do I just get a job? Do I continue college? Do I... How do I get to pay this rent? Except Star chooses in the end to go back on Earth. What a coincidence. Coincidence? 
I think not! And her decision reminds me of season 1 when both Marco and Star chose to go back to Earth after receiving the dimensional scissors for the first time. And that was after knowing of the fact that they could go anywhere. But honestly, that is just truly coincidental how all of a sudden she goes back to Earth when it's as soon as Marco leaves. Also, she goes for a hug, but Marco <laughs> manages to escape in order to show her his new sister. Also, the doctors got the sex of the baby wrong in the recent episode including the baby. It was actually a girl, not a boy. And that's why you're research the hospital. Her name is Mariposa, which by the way in Spanish once translated is butterfly, so um, <laughs> that theory better come true. So uh-huh, she couldn't find a good place to go to with Tom, but all of a sudden, oh yep, Marco's over there, so surely maybe I should just go over there, you, you know, why not star so it ends with marco saying that he's also happy to see star after all of that and then it goes on to the next episode britta's tacos so from the beginning we are presented with marco trying to get 200 punches on a card in order to get a prize at the end <sighs> if only it was 200 punches in real life he would have gotten it already so anyways, they finally make it up to Britta's Tacos, and it's revealed that Sensei and Oscar are both working at the taco shop. We even start off with Oscar mentioning not being able to spend time with Star from last summer a year ago, and Sensei leaving the dojo. And I'm only guessing that since Marco left, Jeremy's family no longer contributed to the dojo once Jeremy's drive for competition wasn't there anymore. And I just find it freaking hilarious throughout the entirety of the episode, almost everyone assumes that Marco had a baby. And even Alfonso and... And Ferguson, they just they just guessed that all of a sudden, oh yeah, Marco and Star had a baby. Wow, they really went there. Another thing was that we were finally able to see Star Fan 13 after some time, and I was really glad to see her, especially after that compilation I made. Um, by the way, I'm trying to do part two of that, but it, it takes some time, guys, trust me. But anyways, everyone also mentions how Jackie might be upset with Marco for being a terrible boyfriend, and even a random dude in the bathroom that looked quite similar to Marco also warned him about it. I wonder if Marco was somehow replaced with another person when he was younger in order to hide his human history. Nah. But honestly, for real though, he looked exactly like Marco with the mustache and everything back in season 1 when he was growing one. But that is admittedly ignoring certain details such as his signature mole, his chin, and some freckles that are shown on the other guy. This is probably Disney once again trying to screw with us, but I don't know. <laughs> Mr. Crandall was another character shown, and he strangely once again pretended to, or at least didn't seem to know anything about Muni. I swear. There's gonna be a reveal with this guy. He's either secretly still being hired to spy on Marco in order for Tom to see if he's still with Star, or this dude really is a doppelganger and there are clones of humans and humans spread across. And it's weird how we just saw someone that looked remarkably similar to Marco, but I honestly believe it's the latter of what I was saying. Tom just separated from Star again, and then all of a sudden Mr. Crandall is seen in the very next episode. Just saying. So eventually, after meeting up with Alfonso and Ferguson for the first time in forever, Jackie then shows up and is revealed to not be mad at him at all. Should have known since Jackie did break up with him in the nicest way possible with a smile on her face. She even gives Marco advice to stay with Star and to not screw it up. Like, dude. Marco, what other signs do you need, man? So he finally achieves all 200 punches until apparently someone stole the prize after winning the 200 punches. And the prize was a shirt saying Britta's Tacos. Now, I really don't know how they got past them, but I wonder who took the shirt. Seriously. I mean, for all we know, Janna probably was the one who did it after being banned from the place and even wearing disguises in order to fool certain employees. Now, I've seen the next couple of episodes and I can't wait to analyze them for you all. This has been the next big thing once again with a Star vs. Analysis video, and I will catch you lovely people in the next one. Peace!